It's the eve of Thanksgiving, and people around the country are traveling to get home. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? In Portland, Oregon, a man under the name of Dan Cooper pays $20 for the 245 flight to Seattle, Tacoma. Flight 305 is one of the shortest journeys on Northwest Orient schedules, just half an hour in normal conditions. There are no security or identity checks on domestic flights. So in 1971, it was possible to board an airplane carrying a gun, carrying a, a bomb, carrying knives, carrying weapons. Nobody checked. You could just get on and go as Dan Cooper did. The slim man in his mid-40s is wearing mirrored sunglasses and dressed like a typical businessman. He takes his seat at the back of the plane. Stewardess Florence Schaffner takes his drink order. Bourbon and seven on the rocks, please. OK. Uh, on takeoff, the man hands Florence an envelope. This, this is for you. At first, she thinks he's flirting. But his insistent gaze persuades her to open the envelope. The note reads, Miss, I have a bomb here and would like you to sit by me. The shock stewardess asks the man if he's serious. She calls her colleague, Tina Mucklow. Inside the hijacker's briefcase, he reveals what appears to be a bomb. He holds the bare ends of two wires threatening to blow up the plane unless his demands are met. There's a man, he's sitting in the back, and he has a, a bomb. Uh, we're in route to Seattle. The hijacking is relayed to the control tower. Northwest Orient and the FBI are alerted. The uh, dispatcher told me that there had been a hijacking of a Northwest airliner at uh, Portland Airport and to get there pronto. Meanwhile, Cooper makes his demands. I want $200,000 cash. He wants $200,000 placed in a knapsack. I want four. He also wants four parachutes, two main back chutes, and two safety front chutes. The terrified attendant takes both notes forward to the captain. Later, Cooper will demand these notes back. Just be advised we have a passenger that's hijacking the... The description of the bomb makes the FBI conclude that the man is a serious threat. Agent Hemmelsbach advises Northwest Orient to cooperate. Here's a, an airplane full of innocent people. They're hostages uh, being held at a threat of their lives. So I said, well, whatever it takes, you do it if you can. Long easy, 178 echoes. Northwest Orient quickly agrees to the demands. FBI agents contact Seafirst Bank in Seattle. The bank provides money with pre-recorded serial numbers. The man calling himself Dan Cooper seems calm, sipping his bourbon while smoking his way through nearly half a pack of Raleigh cigarettes. Later, Warren Shafter would even say that the man seemed rather nice. Finally, the ransom money and parachutes arrive at the airport. Cooper insists that they taxi to a remote part of the runway. Cooper failed to specify the denomination of the ransom money. 
and the $200,000 is made up of $20 bills. It weighs 23 pounds. The passengers, still unaware of the threat, are released along with two attendants, including Florence Schaffner. The rest of the flight crew remains captive. The plane is refueled and cleared for takeoff. Hijacker demands that they fly at 10,000 feet with landing gear and flaps down. The plane's speed will be limited to around 200 miles per hour. He wants to fly to Mexico City. Tina, we cannot make it to Mexico. But there's not enough fuel on board. We can't make it to Mexico City, it's too far. The captain offers Reno or Phoenix. Reno's nice. Let's go to Reno. Seattle Center, Northwest. The autopilot is set on flight path Victor 23, which allows for low altitude flying. Meanwhile, two Air Force jets shadow the plane. But they can't maintain such a low speed and have to circle around the hijacked plane. Cooper orders Tina Mucklow to join her colleagues in the cockpit. Tina notices that Cooper is tying something around his waist. She thinks he is attaching the bag of money to himself. Captain, I have an indication of the aft stairway door has been opened. Stairway door. The warning light indicates that the rear door and stairs have been deployed. Jump out. A Boeing 727 is one of the only commercial planes with rear stairs. In 1971, there's nothing to stop them being deployed during flight. The crew are terrified that Cooper will jump, then detonate the bomb still on board. Uh, Captain, we are losing pressure. We are losing cabin pressure. Exactly what happens next has been in debate for over 45 years. The only clear fact is that Dan Cooper was never seen or heard from again.